What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So one of the questions that I've been getting a lot lately and we are actually getting some updates on this has to do with a potential attack on our electrical grid. Well, here's what I can tell you. Based off of all the reports that I've read of statements from, uh, from grid operators, from facility managers, one of the things that we are concerned with at this time in the United States is Russia, China, or Iran using a cyber attack and attacking our electrical grids. Here's the other issue. It's not just a cyber attack that we should be worried about. And I say this because of this one thing. The US border is not secure. So we are getting Russian nationals, we are getting Chinese nationals, and we're getting Iranian nationals entering into the United States at this time and over the past few years. So that's the concern, is that not only could we potentially see a cyber attack against the United States, we could also see a physical attack against our electrical grids. Now, we have heard from the FBI, we've heard from Homeland Security over the past few weeks, and they both stated that they are pretty much on high alert. They are going to determine if there is a credible threat. They have looked into multiple different reports over the past few weeks as well, some of which they stated were uh, somewhat alarming. However, they were not extremely credible, okay? I don't know exactly how that works, but that's what they said. Now, the one thing I can tell you moving forward, we need to have some type of backup just in case there is an attack on our electrical grid. So if you are driving an electrical vehicle, electric vehicle, one thing I tell you is to make sure you have another option. Okay, make sure your vehicle is fully charged every single day. The second thing is if you do not have a generator uh, that you can plug in, you know, items at your house like a refrigerator, then you need to get one. If you don't have a solar panel that can pull in, uh, you know, a little bit of electricity and store it into a battery, chances are you should probably get one. I'm not saying this because uh, I'm a full on, you know, prepper survivalist. I'm saying this because that is what experts are telling us. I, you know, I, you know, I told you uh, that earlier today, I'm down, I'm down here in, uh, in Las Vegas. It's where I'm at right now. Um, and I see all these homes with, uh, obviously with solar panels on the top and they're pulling in some, some, uh, you know, electricity, which is great. But the concern there is you'd be a target. If you are the house and the uh, entire block that you're the only one that has solar panels on your roof, guess what? If something were to happen, guess where all the neighbors are going? To you, to your house. Because guess what? You have solar panels. You thought ahead, chances are you're good to go. You got electricity. Well, that could be a problem because if everybody comes to you and you don't have that kind of electricity stored, well, guess what? Too bad because they're gonna demand, hey, plug in my car, plug in my, my phone. For what reason? Probably, I don't know, but plug in, hey, my uh, kid needs to charge their their switch. Can can we can we charge that? Hey, can we run our refrigerator and our freezer off of your power? Yeah, that's what many experts are saying is going to be what happens. Now, enough of that. But let's talk about how credible these threats are. First off, China has already been embedding themselves into our infrastructure in critical infrastructure for years. Okay, this isn't anything new. This is something that's been going on for years. The FBI warned us, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago that this is something that we are we are going to see more and more of. We are going to find more instances where China has embedded themselves into our infrastructure. We've seen them in uh, water treatment facilities. We've seen them in uh, you know electrical facilities. We've seen them with uh, in uh, transportation, right? been everywhere that's the concern is we had no clue now here's the other concern i brought this up uh, probably two or three weeks ago where duke energy over on the east coast they're deciding they're going to uh 
stop using all Chinese equipment. All Chinese equipment. The reason being, they do not want to be hacked. And if it's a Chinese system, it's it has a higher probability of being hacked. Now, with that said, what does that leave us with other, you know, other systems, right? Other technology. For instance, China, they continue to build and and you know, manufacture and and service uh, certain machines that uh like cranes and stuff like that that offload uh, large uh, you know cargo boxes off of ships. And so, if China decided they wanted to hack that and they want to pretty much stall all offloading, guess what? Those cranes would be stopped. And I addressed this probably a year or two years ago, where there was a lot of concerns. Should we? And this was during the the height of the uh, the supply chain crisis, where China was a threat because all they had to do was pretty much get their hackers to hack into these systems and be like, you know what? We can't have the United States using our our products anymore. Think about how much stuff is used right now that's made in China. For give you an example, this car that I'm sitting in, not mine. It's a rental car. This car. It's an electric, it's a hybrid. It wouldn't work. If China decided they're gonna uh, hack into this car and shut it down, I'd be sitting here for a long time because this car would not work. If uh, your cell phones, you need to make an emergency call. And guess what? China decided, nope, we don't want anybody making an emergency call. We're gonna reroute all the calls. You could do it. They're gonna shut your phones down, your TVs, so that you don't see the news. Yeah, it could happen. What about uh, you know the 911 operators? They cannot send out. They can't dispatch police and firefighters and EMTs because their systems aren't going to work because of the the computers and the technology that they are using. This is the real concern. And so this is just China. Okay. Now I'm not trying to spread fear here. I just want to open up your eyes and because when. The, when I went to uh, and talked to somebody that was knew a lot more than I do, knew a lot more than I do, and this person was telling me about all the stuff that that China had going on, that China was uh, had their fingers in here in the United States, completely blew my mind. Completely blew my mind. Okay, because what we have been led to believe is that the United States doesn't rely on China. But yet we do. We rely on China heavily at this point. Now, the other two that I mentioned, Russia was one and Iran is another one. Russia is not going to be a large threat. The, the probability as of right now, and I don't know the exact numbers, but it's it's China it has the highest uh, probability of, of performing some time to, of an attack on the United States. Iran has the second probability and Russia has the third. Um, again, these are not the highest. Pro it's not like a 99%. Okay, don't quote me on that. Okay, but I don't even think it's like a, a 40%. I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's fairly low. I think it's under like 20%. But Iran is a threat as well. And Iran isn't going to have that, um, isn't going to sit back and think, oh, should we do it? Should we not? Iran is looking at themselves, looking at Hezbollah and Hamas and, and the Houthis and considering what's going on with the United States in the Red Sea, it's turning into a major issue and a major battle. So all I can tell you right now is just be ready that an attack on the United States likely will not be a physical attack. It likely will not cause buildings to collapse and, and fires to uh, you know go raging on for days or hours. It's likely going to be a cyber attack, which you probably think, well, a cyber attack isn't bad. It's not going to hurt anybody. But what if it uh, is a cyber attack on the, the EMTs and they can't get to where they need to go and people lose their life? What's, what if it's an attack on a hospital, a school, right? Uh, an airport. Just think about that for a second. So that's where we're at at this time again. As soon as I know more, I promise I'll come back on and share all the latest news and updates. But as of right now, that's what we know. So again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.